We've had some great debates on real rivalries so far, but none quite match the divisive nature of the episode I'm bringing you today. Determining the superior live-action Spider-Man is not something one should take lightly. There's a lot of factors in play here. Which one makes the best constipated faces? Has the sickest moves on a skateboard? Or requires the most babysitting from a father figure? It's Tobey Maguire versus Andrew Garfield versus Tom Holland on Real Rivalries. You know what time it is. Pizza time. I was gonna say time to get started, but that works too. There's a lot to consider when choosing which Spider-Man is right for the job. The powers, the suits, the movements, the amount of Axe hair gel being applied. Andrew Garfield nails all of these, especially the last point. The suits are obviously subjective, as is this entire debate, but how they are used within these worlds is pretty cut and dry. Tom Holland is basically wearing an Iron Man Jr. suit, complete with a HUD, built-in Alexa, different webbing abilities, and a kill command, because that's what Spider-Man does. I do think this takes away from Spider-Man's own unique powers, but honestly, shouldn't most of the Avengers be in an Iron Man suit at this point? Hawkeye particularly could benefit from some armor, seen as a rusty nail could kill the guy. Tetanus is a real affliction. My boy Tobes and Andrew Garfield have awesome suit designs. In Toby's case, he gets the added benefit of being able to attach his webs to the sky itself. Something Tom Holland certainly could have used when trying to fast travel without a building in sight. Much like a real spider, Toby can also produce his own webbing. That doesn't come out of his ass. As opposed to having to Bill Nye it out of his room or a school desk. Unfortunately, his supply can run dry just as easily as a canister if our web slinger, uh, how do I put this delicately, isn't feeling up to the challenge. A big part of Spidey's personality is his quipping with enemies. This is where Toby comes up a bit short as he plays the character pretty seriously. Garfield and Holland are far more playful, divvying out one-liners and even accessorizing with some extra flair. Tom Holland's Spider-Man seems to have a harder time figuring out his Spidey sense early on, whereas the older actors pick it up almost instantly. The Amazing Spider-Man has a mess of issues, but they got the lead right on the money. Andrew Garfield takes the round. I think the most obvious thing to point out is Tom Holland is closest in age to that of an actual high schooler, being around 20 years old at the time of filming Homecoming. Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire were approximately 52 when starting their properties. I'm being dramatic, but still, 27 is kind of a stretch. I expect nothing short of a realistic age on my teenager who swings around New York City stopping sand people and dudes made out of electricity. As much as I enjoyed Garfield as Spider-Man, I kind of disliked him as Peter Parker. He's dark, brooding, and very rude to his Uncle Ben. In the sequel, he's more likable, but first impressions are everything, kids. Director Mark Webb, who I'm convinced only got the job because of his last name, did turn Andrew Garfield into a skateboarder. I can only assume this was a nod to the unlockable character in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This is based on zero research or hearsay. Just a, just a gut feeling I have. Tom Holland may not have a board, but he skates right into our hearts as Penis Parker. I'm sorry, Peter Parker. That's a homecoming reference. Subscribe. Move on. Tom Holland nails the awkward, insecure character really well. As with Garfield, they really play up the genius angle too, something that Toby's version lacks a bit. Yes, we're told he's incredibly smart, but we don't really see him do a lot of tinkering or building. He does fancy himself a seamstress, however, and after seeing the final product, I tend to agree. It's a work of art. Toby has the nerd thing covered and shows some fantastic range throughout the trilogy. The trade-off for the great performance is the occasional facial expression that looks like he's passing the world's largest bowel movement. Well, that and this. It's great for the memes, but not so much a serious character arc. Tom Holland edges out a win here, mainly because he probably still gets carded when trying to buy a beer. Spider-Man has a long history, chock full of great comic book villains. The movies do their best to bring them to the big screen with, I think it's fair to say, mixed results. Here's a quick roll call for some of his fearsome foes. There's Power Ranger villain, Son of the Mask. Bone saws ready? Enter Sandman, Dr. Eight-Legged Freak. That's 70s Venom. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turd, Blue Man Group. Transformers Beast Wars Reject. Green Goblin 2.0. 
Birdman, and almost Tobey Maguire's sequel replacement. Tom Holland also fought with his friends in Captain America, small misunderstandings, and even went toe to toe with Thanos and friends in the Infinity Saga. I think it's fair to fictitiously take those off the table though, set them on the ground over here, and just stick to the Spider-Man titular films. Titular. That's a word. I also think J.K. Simmons gets some villain cred too, as he's constantly making Peter's life miserable as J. Jonah Jameson. An actor so perfectly cast, the others didn't even bother attempting a replacement. He doesn't want to be famous, and I'll make him infamous. This round goes to emo Peter Parker. Every hero needs a good friend they can turn to when the chips are down. Their guy in the chair, if you will. Toby has his best friend Harry Osborn and his love interest Mary J. Watson. James Franco provides moral support, and Kirsten Dunst is just a phone call away when it starts to rain outside, Then Toby is itching for that next upside down back alley kiss. Tom Holland has a much snarkier MJ to keep him on his toes. Now come to think of it, maybe they cast Zendaya because she's also a singer, and they assume she would get like two or three musical solos like Dunst did for some reason in Spider-Man 3. Andrew Garfield's Parker doesn't even need friends. He's got science and a mystery to solve. Missing parents will put a chip on one's shoulder for sure, but thankfully Emma Stone is there to remove it. I take expressions literally. She plays Gwen Stacy, the smart, beautiful apple of Garfield's eye. How can his eye be an apple? That doesn't make any sense, Tancer. Well, you wrote the script, not me. Mutated fruit eyes aside, they love each other to their very core. And everyone else is trash. Very core. <laughs> I see what you did there, back, back to the apple again. <laughs> Tancer. Tom Holland has his buddy Ned, who can absolutely pull off a fedora. He also has a hot aunt, his mentor Mr. Stark, and his babysitter Happy. While Andrew Garfield does have Sally mother <laughs> Field, and Toby has the definitive Aunt May, Holland has a Hulk. Scratch that, I forgot we're not doing Avengers stuff. Either way, Tom has the better support staff, and it's gonna give him the round. This was stupid close, as it should be. I have enjoyed all three interpretations of the web slinger so far, but Tom Holland just plays up both sides of the character better. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. And that's fine. But I recommend you channeling that anger into a solid rebuttal in the comments. Give me your winner and why. Slow motion punch that like button if you had some fun. And I'll see you next week on another Real Rivalries. This was a curse for me to do because I already know what the blowback's gonna be in the comments. Had I voted for Toby, I'd be basing it on nostalgia. Had I voted for Andrew Garfield, it would be because I'm some sort of edgelord. Obviously, by picking Tom Holland, that squarely puts me in the Disney shill camp. So, win, win, win.